Most people don't want to be parasites. We want to support ourselves without taking from others. But what if there's a business that's really important to everybody's welfare, and then suddenly, because of an unexpected change in the market, that business can't pay what, it's, what it owes? And if it doesn't pay, other people will go broke, innocent people, and there'll be a great domino effect. Business after business might collapse, and it'll lead to tremendous suffering, maybe another Great Depression. That was the fear six years ago when politicians gave hundreds of, hundreds of billions of your dollars to America's biggest banks. The government's top economic experts warned that without immediate action by Congress, America could slip into a financial panic. A panic? Can't have that. But wait a second. Aren't those banks parasites? Why do they deserve your money? They made stupid, risky investments. They believed housing prices could only go up. And when the housing bubble burst, they should have just been allowed to fail. They would have lost their own money, not yours. That's what I say, though few people agree with me on that. But one who does is hedge fund manager Peter Schiff. And when I say that, people say, uh-uh, this was just too big. If we'd let it go down, the world would have been crushed. Well, it would have been very difficult, no question about it. But I think it's going to be worse now because we did bow them out. But first of all, you have to realize, why did the banks make all those risky loans? Why, why did they act the way they did? It was because the government created the perverse incentives to do so by guaranteeing all the bank deposits, by guaranteeing all the mortgages. The banks acted restlessly. In a free market, they wouldn't have taken those risks. Their depositors wouldn't have allowed it because they would have taken their money out of the risky banks. But because the moral hazard by the government, everybody was taking risks. But government created a parasite economy. They funded Fannie and Freddie and said, loan to everybody, low down payments. Yeah, if the free market was allocating mortgage credit, you wouldn't have this reckless kind of behavior. It was the government guarantee that corrupted everything and led to the financial crisis. But the housing people all lobby the government. Oh, you have to support housing. They're parasites, yeah, well, right? Well, of course, every business is going to go to government with their hat in hand looking for a subsidy. That's why we have to limit the power of government to provide those subsidies. But if the banks failed and credit froze, it did briefly, what do you think would have happened? I think it would have been worse than it was, but I think we'd have a much, a much safer, sounder system today because we would have made real reform. Instead, we just made the system worse. We have the government even more involved in the housing market. I think the crash that's coming is going to be much worse than the one we had in 2008, and the financial crisis much bigger. But if we had let it fall then, people would have worked out new things. Maybe if you couldn't borrow from the bank, you would have used PayPal or new banks would have appeared, the community banks in small towns that weren't so overextended. Yeah, ab absolutely. Instead, you know, some of the small, smaller banks that actually should have been rewarded, that should have been allowed to grow their market share, they were actually punished because now the too big to fail banks that now have extra guarantees, it's now harder to compete with them. And so the too big to fail banks that we bailed out are all much bigger now because we bailed them out. And the next time they fail, it's going to be a lot more expensive. The bailout and the parasite behavior takes two forms. It wasn't just in the $400 billion that Bush gave them. They gave them actually guaranteed 700 and they only took 400 But the Fed <clears throat> basically printed $4 trillion. A right. dozen men got together, I guess it's a woman, and a yeah. dozen yeah. old people got together and said, we'll, we'll have $4 trillion sloshing around the economy. Well, it didn't slosh around the economy. It sloshed around Wall Street. We're not producing more stuff. We're just borrowing and consuming. And we have people who are getting wealthy on paper. But a lot of this paper wealth is going to evaporate when this gigantic bubble bursts. And to push back, it hasn't burst yet. You predicted great inflation several years ago. Hasn't happened. We're, well, we're going to have, have it. You know, sometimes you see things early. I was warning about the housing bubble for years before it burst, and I think I'm early when it comes to inflation. But I think the rate of increase is going to accelerate at some point when we eventually have a dollar crisis. And it's going to be much, much worse than what it would have been had we taken our medicine in 2008 and, and learned from our mistakes instead of repeating them and then actually reformed. And much of this money that the Fed created comes from something called quantitative easing. Few people understand what this means. I like how this cartoon deals with that. Did you hear about the Fed? No. What about the Fed? They announced another round of the quantitative easing. What does that mean? It means they are going to make large asset purchases via POMO. What does that mean? It means they are going to expand their balance sheet and buy treasuries. What does that mean? 
It means they are going to print a ton of money. This is what banana republics do. There has never been a country that has gone down this road where it didn't end in disaster. And I don't think we're going to be the exception to that rule. On that cheerful note, thank you, Peter Schiff.